Good morning, everyone. Yeah, happy New Year. So nice to be with you, uh, all of you today after so long. So, okay, am I looking different? Yeah, I am on my travel mood. Uh, I belong to Ludhiana city, but uh, today I am here in Delhi office, Cerebellum office, because in my winter, uh, my son's winter vacations, I'm traveling with him. Yeah, so holiday time for me going on. <laughs> so you have got the, have you got this uh, unannotated PDF? Is it shared and not? I'm going to continue. Cool. Cool. So you must have got this PDF, which I'm going to use today. Okay, so somebody saying we like the PYQ explanation on the app. Most welcome. I'm happy to hear that. So Tane is saying, Mama, what a lovely session yesterday. You attended yesterday's session also. So why are you here today then? Because it's almost, almost same. <clears throat> yeah, so we have less time today. Uh, we need to be fast. So let's start. Uh, so for those here, I could think yeah. So for those you, uh, yesterday it was a NEAT PG session and uh, that was revision for NEAT PG. Today is FMG uh, marathon, uh, FMG revision session. So um, content is more or less same only. So if anybody has attended yesterday one, you should sit and revise that those notes. It will take one hour for you to revise those notes. When you sit here, it will be three hour again, unnecessary class for you. So I suggest you not to attend it for the, those uh, preparing for need and uh, they have attended yesterday. Okay. And uh, yeah, good morning Fahim. Yeah, most important strike rate, high yielding information in today's class. So let's start quickly without wasting any time. So starting with minerals and vitamins because this is a very important topic, especially for FMG exam. So <clears throat> we'll be first doing causes of B1 deficiency. Uh, recently a question was asked. So uh, B1 uh, is thiamine, T-H-I-A, thiamine. And what is thiamine, T-H-Y? THY, thymine is pyrimidine. So you should be very careful in reading the options, in reading each and every word very carefully. That should be a habit, that should be a practice which you do regularly to be very conscious in reading each and every word in the question and always, always read all four options, right? So you have to be alert in reading. So THIA, thiamine is vitamin B1, but THY will be pyrimidine. So there is Y in thiamine also, Y in pyrimidine also. Okay, that's where you can remember. Then causes of B1 deficiency. First is diets primarily high in polished rice or processed grain. <clears throat> polished rice, uh, 
will not be having the removal of an alluron layer alluron outer layer of grain is rich in vitamin b1 so if that is removed and the uh, diet polished rice is a staple diet for someone then there will be uh, not enough b1 then parenteral nutrition without adequate thiamine supplementation <clears throat> Chronic use of diuretics, prolonged diarrhea, chronic alcoholism, hyperthyroidism, gastric bypass or bariatric surgery and chronic kidney disease. Okay. And note one point that B12 deficiency mostly occur in veganism. In veganism or vegan diet, B1 deficiency will not occur. If polished rice is stable diet, then B1 deficiency will occur. But if diet is vegan, vegan means... When the person is only plant-based, no animal product, um, non-veg eggs and even milk and milk products are not taken, right? Then a beriberi, that is B1 deficiency, is of two types. Wet beriberi, where uh, cardiovascular system is affected and patient has edema, so uh, swelling of legs, shortness of breath, and increased heart rate, these will be symptoms, sign and symptoms. Dry beriberi affect the nervous system. So, patient has a difficulty in walking, numbness in hand and feet, confusion, pain and vomiting. Then, a severe B1 deficiency in alcoholics is known as Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Severe B1 deficiency in alcoholics, in chronic alcoholics. So, this leads to Wernicke Korsakoff. There are two components here Wernicke and Korsakoff. Wernicke is the Wernicke encephalopathy. Korsakoff is the Korsakoff amnesic syndrome. So, these are not different conditions, but different stages. So, first Wernicke encephalopathy or the acute condition will be this Wernicke encephalopathy. But the chronic stage will be the Korsakoff amnesia. And in Wernicke, the classic triad is of ataxia, confusion and ophthalmoplegia. Ataxia, mental confusion and ophthalmoplegia. Right? Then Korsakoff is amnesia or memory disorder. <clears throat> Then in B, vitamin B2 is riboflavin. Okay, so riboflavinosis. In riboflavinosis, what happens is uh, magenta tongue or glossitis. So magenta tongue or glossitis, chelosis, that is uh, inflammation of angle of mouth. It is also called magenta tongue or geographical tongue. PDF is shared in the group also and in the Zoom chat also, I think. Yeah, you should use this PDF uh, and it will be very easy to attend this class. So, I've already, we have already given the PDF. Then, there are marker enzymes for... Uh, especially we learn marker enzyme for B1, B2 and B6 deficiency. So, can you tell me what is the marker enzyme for B1? Marker for B1 is transketolase. It is transketolase activity, not the quantity. Not the quantity of enzyme, it is the activity of enzyme which we check for B2, which enzyme? For B2, it is glutathione reductase. Also tell me, glutathione peroxidase requires which thing? Glutathione reductase is marker for B2. But glutathione peroxidase requires selenium or you can say the 21st amino acid selenocysteine. And it has role as antioxidant. Okay. What about B6? 
marker enzyme for B6. Marker enzyme for B6 is transaminase. Remember, SGOT, SGPT enzymes, they both <clears throat> require, they, they both require B6. Transamination reactions require B6. Okay. Then, uh, B, uh, the vitamin deficiency uh, where homocysteine is increased. So, homocysteine is increased in these three vitamin deficiencies, B6, B9 and B12. B6, B9, B12. So, if homocysteine increase given in the question, then it can be B6 or B9 or B12. So, how will you uh, how will you be uh, sure it is which vitamin deficient? That will depends on the. Okay, I'll uh, I'll avoid writing the right lower corner. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, the special metabolites, specific metabolite for these vitamins are vitamin B6, xanthuranic acid for vitamin B6. Then for B9, it is fig glue, form aminoglutamate, form aminoglutamate. For B12, it is L-methyl malonic acid, right? This is very, very important. So, many clinical questions are asked and you can solve it from uh, this slide. So, there is a doubt that, ma'am, why we give thiamine before glucose administration in Verzicke Korsakoff treatment? So, here in treatment, we give first B1, then glucose. Otherwise, lactic acidosis will worsen because pyruvate to acetyl CoA requires vitamin B1 link reaction pyruvate to acetyl CoA requires vitamin B1 so if there is B1 deficiency then pyruvate is getting converted to lactate leading to lactic acidosis so already in patients of uh, alcoholic patients B1 deficiency is there. So, pyruvate gets converted to lactate. These patients have mild lactic acidosis, right? And if they land in emergency, obviously, they have high level of acidosis. Now, if you will give glucose first, then what will happen? Glucose will also be converted to pyruvate. Excess of pyruvate cannot be converted to acetyl CoA. Excess of pyruvate will be converted to lactate. So, Lactic acidosis will worsen. Lactic acidosis worsen otherwise. So we have to give B1 first so that pyruvate to acetyl CoA conversion starts happening. Then slowly, gradually, we give uh, glucose, parenteral glucose to the patient. Otherwise, lactic acidosis will worsen. In short, the answer is lactic acidosis will worsen. So, I'll repeat again. Uh, first, if you give glucose to these patients, glucose will be converted to pyruvate. Now, pyruvate cannot be converted to acetyl CoA because vitamin B1 is deficient. So, pyruvate will be converted to lactate and lactic acidosis will worsen. So, we should not give glucose first. First, we should give vitamin B1. So, pyruvate to acetyl CoA conversion will start. Later, we give glucose so that glucose gets converted to pyruvate. Pyruvate gets converted to acetyl CoA, which enters TCA cycle to give energy. <clears throat> So, what do you mean by atypical vitamin? Atypical vitamin is that vitamin which can be synthesized in body. So, can you tell me which are the atypical vitamins? 
डॉक्टर नीरा इज आस्किंग मैम फॉर बी सिक्स जानथ्यूरानिक एसिड लेवल सीन और ट्रांसिमिनेस सी दीज आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स जानथ्यूरानिक एसिड विल बी कमिंग इन यूरिन वेन देर इज बी सिक्स डेफिशियंसी एंड ट्रांसिमिनेस एंजाइम कैन इज ए मार्कर एंजाइम फॉर बी सिक्स डेफिशियंसी मीन्स इफ वी चेक द एक्टिविटी ऑफ ट्रांसिमिनेस एंड इट इज नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली देन वी आर श्योर इट इज बी सिक्स डेफिशियंसी So atypical vitamin can be synthesized in body. Which are the atypical vitamins? Yes, it is vitamin B three or niacin and vitamin D. For the formation of niacin, which amino acid is used? Which amino acid is used? Tryptophan is used. And sixty milligram tryptophan is used to make one milligram niacin. Here, vitamin B two and B six both are required. So, an amino acid can make a vitamin. Okay, amino acid can make a vitamin. Then, vitamin D is synthesized from cholesterol in skin. Under the effect of UVB rays, here the rate limiting enzyme is one alpha hydroxylase. Rate limiting enzyme for vitamin D synthesis, one alpha hydroxylase present in kidneys. Activated by PTH, parathyroid hormone. So all these are very high yielding slides. We have only around hundred plus, uh, just a little more than hundred slides. So it will be very helpful for you to revise. And I have done many comparisons on each slide. So too much information on one slide, so that revision is very uh, helpful. So you, uh, my suggestion is to revise these hundred slides five six times. <clears throat> Okay, so vitamin D synthesized from cholesterol under the effect of UVB rays. Rate limiting enzyme is one alpha hydroxylase present in kidneys, and it is activated by parathyroid hormone PTH. Okay, then signs and symptoms of pellagra. So there are six Ds of pellagra. Earlier we were doing three Ds. Now it is six. <clears throat> these uh, delirium, dementia, depression. So nervous system is involved in pellagra. Nervous system is involved. Delirium, uh, delirium, dementia, depression. Then dermatitis. That is photosensitive dermatitis. Very typical is Kazel's necklace. Kazel's necklace. Photosensitive dermatitis on the exposed areas of the body, like elbow and uh knees so photosensitive dermatitis diarrhea and death then causes of pellagra all oh, these are very very important causes of pellagra b2 or b6 deficiency i told you b2 or b6 required for the formation of niacin then isoniazid inhibit plp formation plp is pyridoxal phosphate active form of b6 so when we give this isoniazid anti-tubercular drug to the patients, then multi uh, B complex vitamins are also given along with it because there's B six deficiency that will lead to B three deficiency also. Then high corn or maize diet has, if it is a stable diet, then also pellagra occurs because maize protein zine it lacks tryptophan, and tryptophan is making. Niacin. 
Then Joardite sorghum has excess of leucine, which inhibits QPRTAs. QPRTAs is the rate limiting enzyme for niacin formation. Cryptophan to niacin, the rate limiting enzyme is QPRTAs. Then we have carcinoid syndrome and heart nubs disease. Carcinoid syndrome in which too much of tryptophan is used to make serotonin. Too much tryptophan is used to make serotonin that very less is available for niacin formation. In case of heart nubs disease, tryptophan is lost in urine. When I'm writing TRP, that stands for tryptophan. Tryptophan lost in urine. It is not reabsorbed. Pellegra is, uh, so there is a doubt from one student. Pellegra is B3 deficiency or B2, B6. Pellegra stands for B3 deficiency. But look here. B2 and B6 are required for the formation of B3. So B2 or B6 deficiency will also lead to B3 deficiency. So that will lead to pellagra. So heart nub disease, tryptophan lost in urine. Then if you uh, find a question where dermatitis and diarrhea is given, don't just mark pellagra. It can be zinc deficiency also. So on this slide, I'm showing you how to differentiate. So if dermatitis diarrhea given, then either it is pellagra niacin deficiency or it is zinc deficiency. Now, uh, if it is pellagra, then photosensitive dermatitis, delirium, dementia, depression would be given. Kazel's necklace picture can be given, right? But if it is zinc deficiency, then it will be perioral region rashes or dermatitis. That is inflammation around nose, mouth, cheeks, elbow, anus, right? So it is perioral rash, delayed wound healing. Zinc has a very important role in wound healing. So delayed wound healing, alopecia written, then the answer is more towards zinc deficiency. And what is this known as? This zinc deficiency dermatitis is known as? Yes, very good, Dr. Bridge. Acrodermatitis. Acrodermatitis enteropathica. So you can see this infant shown here with acrodermatitis enteropathica having rashes and dermatitis in the Anal region also, cheeks, elbows. Okay, moving on to the next page. Then, usually fat-soluble vitamins have uh, toxicity because they get stored in the body. But water-soluble vitamins, B3 and B6 can have toxicity. In B3 toxicity, there is macular edema and macular cyst. Also, hepatic uh, toxicity, hyperuricemia, and GI symptoms and impaired glucose tolerance. This GI symptoms and impaired glucose tolerance occurs in both vitamin toxicity. Then in B6, in case of B6, especially neuropathy, sensory neuropathy, seizures, and photosensitivity. In B6 deficiency also, B6 deficiency also, neuropathy and seizures occur. So in B6 toxicity also, neuropathy and seizures occur in deficiency also. Right? <laughs> then vitamin A deficiency symptoms and toxicity symptoms written together on the same slide so that it is very easy for you to revise. So, first we'll do deficiency. Deficiency of uh, 
vitamin A. Normally, vitamin A suppress keratinization or it will balance the keratin deposits. But in vitamin A deficiency, there will be excess keratin deposits and dryness. So, you already know night blindness as a uh, symptom of vitamin A deficiency. Then we have dryness, viruptalmia, keratomalacia, immunosuppression, skin ulceration, corneal ulceration and scarring, atrophy of urinary tract and respiratory tract leading to recurrent infections. Recurrent infections. Then a very specific sign is bite out spot. What is bite out spot? This is foamy appearance of uh, uh, foamy appearance in the conjunctiva due to keratin deposits. Conjunctiva foamy appearance due to keratin deposits and keratin deposits in the hair follicles leading to follicular hyperkeratosis. Or we also sometimes say phrynoderma or goosebump like appearance. Then sign of vitamin A toxicity. Now vitamin A is stored in liver. Stored in liver ITO cells or perisinusoidal cells. So liver will be affected. Hepatomegaly liver damage. There is raised intracranial tension resembling like so much headache to patients that it resembles a tumor in the brain. So also called pseudotumor cerebri. Pseudotumor cerebri. Then patient has hyperlipidemia, blurred vision, alopecia and dry pruritic skin. So in deficiency, eyes are affected a lot. In excess of vitamin A, one vision problem is blurred vision. right? Then vitamin K cycle. Vitamin K is coenzyme for the activation of clotting factors, which clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. So glutamate residues have negative charge due to their carboxy. Now already negative charge in there is there in these clotting proteins, but for their activation. We need to increase this negative charge. We need to add more carboxy. So there is formation of gamma carboxyglutamate. This happens in microsomes of hepatocytes in the liver cells. Now the enzyme is vitamin K dependent carboxylase. And now vitamin K, the active form of vitamin K is KH2 hydroquinone form. KH2 hydroquinone form. <clears throat> which is a reduced form, KH2, right? Now, from reduced to oxidized, so oxygen is added. Oxygen added for its oxidation leading to vitamin K epoxide form. On the other hand, carbon dioxide is added for the carboxylation of the clotting factors. So, oxygen added for vitamin K oxidation, carbon dioxide added for carboxylation of the clotting factors and their activation. Now we have got the oxidized epoxide form. So then epoxide reductase enzyme. So two steps of reduction will occur so that we get the KH2 form back. So epoxide reductase or vitamin K reductase, we get the quinone form. Then we have quinone reductase and reductases require NADPH. Warfarin anticoagulant is the comparative inhibitor of epoxide reductase. Also, write down dicumerol here. So, dicumerol is the inhibitor at this step. Dicumerol and warfarin anticoagulants inhibit this step. Okay, so this was vitamin K cycle. 
Now, normally carboxylases, this is vitamin, this was vitamin K dependent carboxylase. Tell me normally carboxylase requires which vitamin? Yes, Sina, very good. So, there's a mnemonic ABC of carboxylase. All carboxylases require ABC plus magnesium. A stands for ATP. B stands for biotin, that is vitamin B7. C stands for carbon dioxide. So, all carboxylases require vitamin B7, carbon dioxide and ATP. But this one was different, vitamin K dependent carboxylase for the activation of clotting factors. Then uh, I have written this, these three drugs starting from DIDI so that it is easy for you to revise all of them together. So dicamerol is vitamin K antagonist, right? And it's anticoagulant. Then dimercaprol, a British antileucide ball, inhibits complex 3 of ATC. Then disulfuram is alcohol antibuse substance which inhibits which enzyme? Tell me, disulfiram inhibits which enzyme? Disulfiram inhibits aldehyde dehydrogenase. Aldehyde dehydrogenase. Yes, Lokesh, very good. So when you write AD, it can be alcohol dehydrogenase also. So you should, you should write Aldehyde dehydrogenase, ALD. The next Cation's disease is selenium deficiency. The characteristic feature is cardiomyopathy, usually happening in uh, affecting children and women of childbearing age. Whenever the soil or in a particular region there is deficiency of selenium in the soil, it uh, can patients can have many patients can have Cation's disease. So, Cation name comes from a province of China where it was first discovered. So, patient has muscle weakness, dystrophy, inability to gain weight, hypothyroidism, hypertension, eczema, arthritis. And also, selenium poor soil correlates with high incidence of cancer. Selenium, glutathione and vitamin E works in association as antioxidant. They all work together in the antioxidant. And vitamin E is the most potent lipid phase antioxidant. Vitamin E most potent lipid phase antioxidant. Then Menke's and Wilson's disease. Menke uh, is copper deficiency. Wilson is copper excess. So we learn these two things in because of the alphabet M and W. So M comes before W or we can say W is larger than M, alphabetical order. So M is less and W is large or bigger. So M has copper deficiency and Menke's M has ATP 7A protein which is deficient. <clears throat> Wilson's W uh, ATP 7B protein is deficient right? Now ATP 7A protein absorb copper from intestine so there will be uh, copper will not be absorbed so there will be copper deficiency then ATP 7B protein the work of this protein is to throw copper in bile so copper is not thrown out of the body so copper stay in the body and there is copper excess then CP stands for ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is copper transport protein. It is copper transport protein. So, Ceruloplasmin is decreased in both cases. In Menke's disease also it is decreased. In Wilson's also it is decreased. Why? Because ceruloplasmin uh, is not formed in Menke's disease because copper is not there. In Wilson's disease, ATP7B protein 
helps in the incorporation of copper in celluloplasmin. That's why active proper celluloplasmin is not found. Menke's disease is X-linked recessive. Wilson's is autosomal recessive. In Menke's disease, there is mental retardation. Gray kinky hair. Right? Gray kinky hair. So this child has gray hair also and kinky hair also. Then in Wilson's disease, copper is increased in liver, brain. So here also brain is affected. Menke's disease also mental retardation is there. So brain affected in both cases. So copper increased in liver, brain, kidneys, bone marrow, RBCs leading to hemolytic anemia. And characteristic feature of Wilson's disease is sunflower cataract, sunflower cataract, Kaiser Fleischer ring or KF ring that is green or golden or brown pigmented ring in the desmet membrane of cornea. Okay, so one slide for Menke and Wilson, you learn a lot of things here. Then uh, iron absorption factors, factors which increase iron absorption are vitamin C, cysteine, acidic pH. They all convert it to ferrous form. Ferrous form of iron is absorbed, Fe plus 2. Right? So learn it from C. Increase iron absorption by C. C for vitamin C, cysteine and acidic, acidic pH. Then factors which decrease iron absorption. So POT is the mnemonic or you can say T pot. POT pot. For, from P it is phytates and phosphates. Phytates and phosphates which decrease iron absorption. O is oxalate. T is tannates present in D. So T pot. Then fluorine. Fluorine is a double-edged sword because uh, both deficiency and excess are harmful and it's a very small range of deficiency and excess. So less than 0 0.5 parts per million in drinking water, less than 0 0.5 lead to dental caries and acidic destruction of enamel and dentin. Then more than 5 parts per million leads to dental fluorosis where there is decreased mineralization in enamel and decreased mineralization and mottling of enamel, stratif stratification, discoloration and increased porosity. So less than 0 0.5 deficiency, more than 5, 5 is dental fluorosis, more than 20 is skeletal fluorosis. More than 20 parts per million is skeletal fluorosis where patients have osteosclerosis, osteoporosis, <clears throat> typhosis, genovalgum. So skeletal fluorosis. Then coming to, let's do some diseases. So lysosomal storage diseases. We will do these three lists. Lysosomal storage diseases where hydrolase enzyme, various hydrolase enzyme of lysosome is deficient. So mucopolysaccharidosis, example, Hurler and Hunter, that's a lysosomal storage disease. Then eye cell disease, pompous disease, which is glycogen storage disease type 2. Then sphingolipidosis, cystinosis and Wallman's disease. All these are Lysosomal storage diseases. Can you tell me the diseases of Garrod's tetrad? For Garrod's tetrad, cap mnemonic. So tell me, what is the C, C, A and T? There are two A's, alcaptonuria, alcaptonuria and albinism, very good. P is pentose urea. What is C? Some students are saying cystinosis. Some are saying cystine urea. What is the C? Okay, let me tell you. C here stands for cystine urea. Mostly here we have cystine urea, lactone urea, pentose urea. So, garotetra diseases are mostly in urine. Urea, 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 cystine urea, alcaptone urea, pentose urea. Then tell me the examples of sphingolipidosis. In sphingolipidosis, the first I'm going to write is Gaucher's disease because this is most common. Gaucher's disease. 
Gosho's Niemann-Pick disease, Fabry, Farber, Kravis, Sandhoff, Tay-Sax, GM1, gangliosidosis. So you should be knowing the names of at least all the all the sphingolipidosis. <clears throat> GM1 gangliosidosis and metachromatic leukodystrophy. dystrophy. Metachromatic leukodystrophy. And then you you know that mostly sphingolipidosis have cherry red spots. So here is an exception. All sphingolipidosis have cherry red spot except mnemonic KGF. KGF, the movie KGF. A for Krabis, G for Gosh's, and F for Fabris. So these three are not having cherry red spot. Okay. So, Gosh's disease uh, is most common lysosomal storage disease. So, let's do the detail. Most common. Sphingolipidosis also. Enzyme is beta glucoserebrosidase or beta glucoside ceramidase. Patient has hepatosplenomegaly, bony pain, pathological fracture, pancytopenia, thrombocytopenia due to which easy bruising. X ray long bone has Erlen Meyer flask deformity, that is, ends of the long bones are lytic and expanding. There's no mental retardation, no cherry red spot in Gosh's disease. Glucoform is not found in brain. Enzyme replacement therapy available, acid glucosidase, imiglucerase, alveloglucerase alpha, and teleglucerase alpha. And characteristic feature is crumpled tissue paper appearance because glucoserebroside accumulate in the macrophages. So like a crumpled tissue paper or also we say wrinkled appearance of the cell. Crumpled tissue paper or wrinkled appearance of the cell. So various images of this kosher cell I have shown so that you don't miss recognizing uh, an image-based question. Then calcification of adrenals. In Wolman's disease. Characteristic feature of Wolman disease calcification of adrenals. It's a lysosomal storage disease, I already told you. But be careful, it is not a sphingolipidosis. The enzyme is acid lipase. In which disease acid maltase is deficient? Wolman is acid lipase. What about acid maltase? Yes, very good. That is in Pompey's disease, glycogen storage disease type 2. Then characteristic uh, other, other clinical features are watery green diarrhea, vomiting, failure to thrive, hepatosplenomegaly. This is also known as cholesterol ester storage disease. Cholesterol, ester, and triglycerides are increased in these patients. Give me a minute. Okay, <clears throat> moving on further. Mucopolysaccharidosis. Mucopolysaccharidosis, Hurler and Hunter disease. So in both of them, Hurler and Hunter, heparin sulfate and dermatin sulfate accumulates. Heparin sulfate Dermatin sulfate 
accumulates. Now type 1 is hurler. Type 1 hurler, death occurs in first decade of life. Type 2 hunter, death, death occurs in second decade of life. Easy to learn. Uh, type 1 autosomal recessive, more severe, less common. Coronal clouding is present. Enzyme is alpha L hydronidase. Type 2 hunter, X-linked recessive, so mostly patient is a male, less severe, more aggressive. So usually hunter is a male, hunters are going to jungle for hunting, so they are killing someone, so they are aggressive. Hunter disease patients have more aggressive behavior. And there is no corneal clouding or we can say they have clear vision. Any hunter should be having a clear vision. So very easy to learn. Hunter disease, type 2. Patient is usually a male, X-linked recessive. They have more aggressive behavior. But yeah, less severe as compared to hurler. No corneal clouding. They have clear vision. The enzyme is idoronate sulfidase. <clears throat> Rally body inclusions in mucopolysaccharidosis, especially found in hurler type 1 as compared to hunter. What are these rally body inclusions? These are dark purple coarse granules, metachromatic granules surrounded by a clear zone. They are partially digested mucopolysaccharides present here. They are seen in all the leukocytes resembling toxic granulation in neutrophils. <clears throat> then general feature of any mucopolysaccharidosis general feature of MPS is the short form of mucopolysaccharidosis that is bullet shaped middle, bullet shaped middle phalange another general feature is mental retardation these will be occurring in both uh, Hurler and Hunter disease. Okay, mental retardation, hepatosplenomegaly, coarse facial features, Okay, general features of mucopolysaccharidosis, coarse facial features, copious nasal discharge, frontal bossing, mental retardation, hepatosplenomegaly, bullet-shaped middle phalanges and other skeletal abnormalities. <clears throat> then phenylketonuria, PKU, phenylketonuria, most common Metabolic disorder of amino acids is phenylketonuria. So, tell me which enzyme is deficient? Phenylalanine gets converted to tyrosine by enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. This enzyme is deficient in phenylketonuria. So the product tyrosine will not be formed. The substrate phenylalanine will accumulate. So when tyrosine is not formed, normally tyrosine makes melanin, catecholamines, 
and thyroid hormones. So all these will not be formed. Melanin, catecholamines, thyroid hormones will not be formed. So because melanin not formed, so patient has hypopigmentation. Because catecholamines and thyroid hormones are required for brain, very important for brain. So these patients have mental retardation, severe mental retardation. And what is the odor? Odor of body odor of these patients? Mousy, musty odor. Mousy, musty odor is because of phenyl acetate. For any inborn error of metabolism, mass spectrometry or tandem mass spectrometry is used. For any inborn error of metabolism, tandem mass spectrometry is used. So then is albinism. Which enzyme deficient in albinism? Tyrosine to melanin enzyme is tyrosinase tyrosinase is an oxidase and any oxidase requires copper so this enzyme is not working in albinism so these patients also have hypopigmentation how will you differentiate it from phenylketonuria patients phenylketonuria patients also have hypopigmentation Albinism patients also have hypopigmentation. But very important point is no mental retardation in albinism. No mental retardation. And mostly it is oculocutaneous type of albinism where eyes and skin also affected. Oculocutaneous albinism. Then is vitiligo, patchy hypopigmentation. You do vitiligo in detail in uh, dermatologies only. But I just want to mention one point here that the enzyme tyrosinase is normal in vitiligo. So tyrosinase enzyme is affected in albinism, but it is normal in vitiligo. Okay. Then next is alkaptonuria or black bone disease. Enzyme is homogentase dioxygenase or oxidase. The new name of enzyme is dioxygenase. Here also no mental retardation. Mental retardation occurs in phenylketonuria and MSUD. But no mental retardation in albinism and alkaptonuria. <clears throat> so, a typical uh, case of alkaptonuria is 40 year old patient is there presented with back pain. Why back pain? Because of ochronosis in the intervertebral disc leading to calcification. Ochronosis. So dark pigmentation of skin, bluish black discoloration of skin, you can see here in this picture, black urine, bluish discoloration of sclera, sclera or cartilage, also discoloration of clothes in armpit because of the black color coming out of sweat also. Black color coming in urine also and color coming in sweat also. So, black color is due to oxidation of homogentisic acid. This black color is due to oxidation of homogentisic acid. Right? In body, that is cartilage connective tissue, homogentisic acid gets polymerized 
over years, like gradually this process occurs. That's why the typical age of patient here is 40 years. So gradually, slowly, over years, this homogentic acid gets polymerized to l captain body. l captain bodies. And this condition is known as Ochronosis. Ochronosis. Then homocysteinuria. HCU homocysteinuria. The enzyme is CBS. Cystathionine beta synthase which converts homocysteine to cysteine and it requires vitamin B6. Enzyme is CBS, cystathionine beta synthase, which converts homocysteine to cysteine. It requires B6. This enzyme is affected in homocysteinuria. So can I say in treatment, we have to give cysteine to these patients because now in these patients, cysteine cannot be formed. So clinical features are dislocation of lens, pectus carinatum, genum, univalgum, osteoporosis and other clinical features are like atherosclerosis, MI, stroke, pulmonary embolism. Okay. Yeah, it uh, acquired homocysteinuria can occur because of B6, B9 or B12 deficiency. Yes, cyanide nitroprusside test will be positive. <clears throat> Let's take a five minutes break and then we'll continue. Five minutes break.
Okay, let's start. Hartnup's disease. I told you tryptophan not reabsorbed. This is a renal transporter defect. So we have three renal transporter defects. In renal transporter defects, first is cystinuria, which is most common renal transporter defect. In cystinuria, the amino acids coming in urine are given by mnemonic cola. C for cystine, O for ornithine, L for lysine, A for arginine. Second is glycinuria. In glycinuria, the amino acid coming in urine is glycine and proline. And third is this heart nub disease. Okay, so we have three renal transporter defects, cystinuria, which is most common, then glycinuria, then heart nub disease. In heart nub disease, it's a neutral amino acid transporter, which is defective. Tryptophan is coming in urine. So tryptophan lost in urine, that's why pellagra. So this boy, 25 year old, red scaly rash, like pellagra, large amount of free amino acids in urine, Parents had consanguineous marriage, representing autosomal recessive inheritance. Most of your biochemical enzymatic disorders have autosomal recessive inheritance. And in all of the uh, amino acid transporter defects, renal transporter defects, the amino acid is not increased in blood still it is coming in urine still getting excreted in urine that is the characteristic feature for any renal transporter amino acid renal transporter defect amino acid is not increased in blood but still it is coming in urine okay remember this point so whenever such a line is written that it is not increased in blood still it is coming in urine then you should think of amino acid renal transporter defect then in Zellweger syndrome, the patient usually has upslanting eyes, high forehead and nasal border, uh, skin folds along the nasal borders. <clears throat> and what is Zellweger syndrome? It is most severe paroxysmal biogenesis disorder. Paroxysmal biogenesis disorder. So this is defect in paroxysms and the paroxysms are empty. No enzyme in paroxysms. Empty paroxysms known as ghost paroxysm. In paroxysms, normally two pathways occur. Alpha oxidation and oxidation of very long chain fatty acid. Alpha oxidation and oxidation of very long chain fatty acid. So this will not occur. So in Zellweger syndrome, there will be increase in phytanic acid, which is a branch chain fatty acid. Normally it undergoes alpha oxidation. But because alpha oxidation will not occur, <clears throat> so phytanic acid is increased and there will be also increased of very long chain fatty acids. What is Refsum's disease? Refsum disease is only a defect in alpha oxidation. In Zellweger syndrome, there is defect in peroxisomes and both pathways of peroxisomes will be affected. Alpha oxidation and very long chain fatty acid. But Refsum disease is only defect of alpha oxidation. So only phytanic acid will be accumulated in Refsum's disease. 
Then we have these three enzyme deficiencies. Usually we get confused sometimes in the clinical questions, but this slide will help you a lot. So first let's do pyruvate kinase deficiency and G6PD deficiency. G6PD is enzyme of HMP pathway. Pyruvate kinase is enzyme of glycolysis or EMP pathway. G6PD deficiency is first most common human enzyme deficiency. Pyruvate kinase is second most common human enzyme deficiency. Hemolysis occurs in both of them. Hemolysis occurs in both of them. But Heinz bodies is the differentiating point because no Heinz bodies in pyruvate kinase deficiency and Heinz bodies are present or by itself present in G6PD deficiency. Then in pyruvate kinase deficiency, because pyruvate is not formed, so there's decreased pyruvate, decreased pyruvate, lactate and alanine. There's decreased pyruvate, lactate, alanine. Now coming to link reaction enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase, PDH. This enzyme normally requires five coenzymes, if you remember. It requires five coenzymes. Which coenzymes? B1, B2, B3, B5 and vitamins, these vitamins and lipoic acid. PDH link reaction enzyme, okay. So there's no hemolysis in this deficiency, but there's increased pyruvate lactate and alanine and lactic acidosis because lactate is increased. So there's lactic acidosis, right? Then what is CPS and what is CPT? CPS and CPT. What is the full form? CPS is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase. Carbamoyl phosphate synthetase, CPS 1 and 2. CPS 1 is rate limiting enzyme of urea cycle. CPS 2 is rate limiting enzyme of pyrimidine synthesis. Source of nitrogen for CPS1 is ammonia, but source of nitrogen for CPS2 is glutamine. CPS1 is in mitochondria, CPS2 is in cytoplasm. Am I audible, visible, or my screen also fine, clear? So now what is CPT? CPT is the enzyme in beta oxidation carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 and 2. CPT1 is in outer mitochondrial membrane and is the rate limiting enzyme of beta oxidation. CPT2 is in inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, CPS, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase, CPT, carnitine palmitoyl transferase. So be careful, be careful in reading. Can I turn the page? Okay, so then we have OTC deficiency. What is OTC? This is second enzyme of urea cycle. Second enzyme of urea cycle. The name is ornithine. OTC stands for ornithine 
transcarbamylase. This is second enzyme of urea cycle present in mitochondria. This is second most common, sorry, this is most common urea cycle defect. OTC deficiency, second enzyme of urea cycle, but it is most common urea cycle defect. So, in any urea cycle defect, hyperammonemia occurs. So, there is hyperammonemia in OTC deficiency. Also, there is increased orotic acid in blood and urine. Increased orotic acid. Increase OMP and UMP also. Okay. Increase orotic acid, OMP, UMP. Now, in orotic acid urea, also there is increased orotic acid in blood and urine. So, how will you differentiate? What is this orotic acid urea? It is defect in pyrimidine synthesis. Defect in pyrimidine synthesis. So, OMP, UMP will not be formed. Orotic acid urea. Patient has megaloblastic anemia and the treatment we have to give pyrimidine, uridine. So, uh, let's revise this slide. OTC, ornithine transcarbamylase, second enzyme of urea cycle present in mitochondria, is the most common urea cycle defect. So, in this, there is hyperammonemia, as hyperammonemia occurs in any urea cycle defect. Also, these patients have increased orotic acid, OMP, UMP. But orotic acid urea, where there is increased orotic acid in blood and urine, it is defect in pyrimidine synthesis pathway. OMP, UMP will not be formed. There is no hyperammonemia. But the patients have megaloblastic anemia because pyrimidines are not formed. And the treatment is uridine needs to be given because pyrimidines are not getting formed. Once this U, uridine is given, then other pyrimidines can be formed in body. Those enzymes are not deficient. Then let's do difference between galactosemia and fructosemia. So, in both of them, liver will be affected. In galactosemia also, fructosemia also, common point is that liver is affected and patients have jaundice and hepatomegaly. But the differentiating point is that galactosemia patients have mental retardation and cataract, that is oil drop cataract. But in case of fructosemia, especially it is HFI, hereditary fructose intolerance, where the enzyme deficient is aldolase B, there is no mental retardation in cataract. But hypoglycemia occurs in fructose disorders. No hypoglycemia in case of galactose, but hypoglycemia occurs in case of fructose because fructose 1-phosphate inhibits glycogen phosphorylase. Fructose 1-phosphate inhibits glycogen phosphorylase, which is rate-limiting enzyme of Glycogen breakdown. And the enzyme deficient in the classical galactosemia is GALT. GALT, galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. Galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. 
So there is a doubt from student, Dr. Jay, what about aldolase A? Aldolase A is enzyme of glycolysis and its deficiency is not common. Aldolase B is in fructose metabolism. Its deficiency is called hereditary fructose intolerance. Patients have liver affected and hypoglycemia. Mental retardation and cataract occurs in galactosemia. Dr. Prakash is asking why no hypoglycemia and galactosemia? Because I have told you the reason of hypoglycemia in fructose. Fructose 1-phosphate inhibits glycogen phosphorylase. But galactose 1-phosphate will not inhibit glycogen phosphorylase. Okay. So all these differentiating points like we did in OTC and OTC and uh, rotic aciduria, CPS 1 and 2, these three enzymes, pyruvate kinase, G6PD, pyruvate dehydrogenase, right? Zellweger and Trefsums, and then galactosemia, fructosemia. So all these are uh, <clears throat> very easy and quick to revise and uh, it will help you differentiate the clinical questions which are asked these days. Then tell me snowflake cataract, these three cataracts, snowflake oil drop, sunflower shown here. Tell me they occur in which situation? Snowflake at cataract occurs in diabetes because of sorbitol. Oil drop cataract in galactosemia is because of galactitol, also called dulcetol. Sunflower cataract, you can see the sunflower shape. Sunflower cataract in Wilson's disease because of copper. Because of copper deposition. Then we have two types of hypoglycemia. One is ketotic hypoglycemia, another is non-ketotic. <coughs> so first is ketotic hypoglycemia which occurs in von Gogh's disease, that is type 1 glycogen storage disease, also alcoholism and starvation. So there are ketone bodies also formed and hypoglycemia also occurring. But another is non-ketotic hypoglycemia. Example, insulinoma. So insulin is hypoglycemic uh, hormone, we all know. But insulin inhibits ketone body synthesis. So insulinoma, excess insulin, ketone body synthesis will not occur, so non-ketotic hypoglycemia. And then beta oxidation, any defect in beta oxidation like MCAD deficiency or Jamaican vomiting sickness or carnitine, CPT1 or CPT2 deficiency, that will lead to non-ketotic hypoglycemia. Very important, non-ketotic hypoglycemia <clears throat> occurs uh, due to any defective beta oxidation. Why this occurs? Because when beta oxidation occurs, the fatty acid is broken down to acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA is used for ketone body synthesis. So... If beta oxidation is not occurring, this acetyl CO is not getting released, so ketone body synthesis will not get the starting material. Okay. Then in MCD deficiency, there is a characteristic feature. What is that? Can anyone tell me the characteristic feature of MCD deficiency? <clears throat> Yes, very good, Dr. Kushi. Dicarboxylic acid urea. Dicarboxylic acid urea in MCAD deficiency. Then let's revise the glycogen storage diseases. Type 1, most common in children. Type 5, most common in adults. So, von Gogh's disease. Enzyme is glucose 6-phosphatase. It affects only liver. Pompey's disease affecting lysosomes. 
the enzyme is acid maltase also known as lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase <clears throat> then type 3 and 4 this is a mnemonic a b c d a for anderson b for branching enzyme c for cori's d for debranching enzyme a b c d Cori's disease also called limit dextrinosis. Anderson disease also called myelopectinosis. Type 2, 3, 4, all are affected. Liver, muscle, brain, all are affected. Then McArdle's disease, characteristic feature of McArdle's disease is, what is the characteristic feature? Lactate not increased after exercise. Enzyme muscle glycogen phosphorylase. Yes, exercise intolerance also in mus in McArdle's disease, but the characteristic feature is lactate not increased after exercise. Then Hurst disease, liver glycogen phosphorylase. So organ affected is only liver. Now in von Gogh's disease also only liver affected. In Hurst disease also only liver affected. How will you differentiate? In Hurst disease, it is mild hypoglycemia. Because when liver is affected, patient has hypoglycemia in case of glycogen storage diseases. In Von Gogh's disease, it is severe hypoglycemia and it is ketotic hypoglycemia. Severe ketotic hypoglycemia. So this is the way you differentiate between type 1 and type 6, severe and mild hypoglycemia. Okay, then is von Gogh's disease. The enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase is responsive, is used in two pathways. Which are these two pathways? Glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis and this enzyme is present in endoplasmic reticulum that is also a very characteristic point this enzyme present in endoplasmic reticulum used in two pathways glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis that's why patients have severe hypoglycemia so these patients have increased triglycerides so, hypertriglyceridemia or hyperlipidemia. This will lead to doll like round face due to fat deposition. Doll like round face. Then, these patients have massive hepatomegaly. Spleen is not enlarged, but kidneys are found to be enlarged in these patients. Also, these patients have lactic acidosis and hyperuricemia. <clears throat> so, there is one doubt to repeat McArdles. In McArdles, the characteristic feature is lactate not increased after exercise. Whenever they give you a question on McArdles disease, they write this line, lactate not increased after exercise. Okay. Yes, in Von Gogh's disease, massive hepatomegaly occurs due to glycogen accumulation. <clears throat> Akash, dicarboxylic acid urea, right now you just cram. Okay, the characteristic feature of MCA deficiencies, dicarboxylic acid urea. Then uh, the rate limiting enzyme, glycogen phosphorylase, rate limiting enzyme of glycogenolysis. This is activated in its phosphorylated form. So any substance which causes phosphorylation, that is the activator. Example, cyclic AMP, 
glucagon glucagon is the activator only in liver because muscles are not having glucagon receptors then catecholamines epinephrine and norepinephrine calcium calmodulin 5 dash amp and kinases all these are activators very important frequently asked then is inhibitors so protein phosphatase insulin glucose and energy are the product of this pathway glycogenolysis so product inhibition by glucose glucose 6-phosphate and atp energy Dr. Amit, kidneys are enlarged in von Gilt's disease because of, again, glycogen deposition. Then fructose 1-phosphate is the uh, inhibitor of glycogen phosphorylase in liver. I told you this point in hereditary fructose intolerance. Then in amino acids, products of amino acids are frequently asked. So phenylalanine is essential. We have to take it in diet. Then the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase converts it to tyrosine. So tyrosine is non-essential. So what is the product of phenylalanine? Only one product of phenylalanine that is tyrosine. Now, tyrosine then makes catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine and thyroid hormones and melanin pigment. So, tell me which is the first catecholamine to be formed? That's another MCQ. First catecholamine to be formed? Yes, the one I've written first. This is the first catecholamine to be formed. And which catecholamine has methyl group? Another question, which catecholamine has methyl group? Epinephrine has methyl group. The source of this methyl group is SAM, S adenosyl methionine. S adenosyl methionine gives methyl group to epinephrine to, for the formation of epinephrine. So, another, another next slide for products of amino acid tryptophan. What are the products for tryptophan? Tell me. One we have already done is niacin, other is serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter for mood elevation. Then is melatonin, which is the neurotransmitter for circadian rhythm. Then, so question was asked, neurotransmitter which is responsible for circadian rhythm is synthesized from which amino acid? It is synthesized from tryptophan. So melanin from tyrosine, melatonin from tryptophan. Okay, smaller name melanin, small name tyrosine. Bigger name melatonin, bigger name tryptophan. Then histidine uh, makes histamine, carnosine, ancidine. Then glycine, although glycine is a very small, smallest, simplest amino acid, but it is giving a lot of products. It is used in the formation of creatine, glutathione, heme and porphyrins. It, it makes glyoxalate, choline, betaine, sarcosine, serine, another amino acid. So all these are products of glycine. Let's also learn glutathione and creatine amino acids. Glutathione has three amino acid joined end to end. It's a tripeptide. <clears throat> Glutathione. It's a tripeptide having three amino acids. Glutamate, cysteine and glycine. Creatine is made from three amino acid by a, a various steps process. So one is arginine, another is methionine and glycine is common in glutathione and creatine. Then the products of serine. It is glycine, selenocysteine, also cysteine,
then phosphatidylserine, sphingosine, which is the alcohol of sphingolipids. Sphingosine is made from serine and palmitoalkoil. alcohol. Then arginine makes nitric oxide or endothelium derived relaxing factor. The second messenger involved here is cyclic GMP. This is frequently asked nitric oxide is synthesized from which amino acid? Arginine. And what is the second messenger involved here? Cyclic GMP. Arginine also makes creatine, urea and ornithine. Then few one-liners, sources of nitrogen and carbon of urea. So carbon of urea is from carbon dioxide and nitrogen is from ammonia and aspartate. Be careful, it is not asparagine, it is not alanine. Amino acid linking Krebs cycle and urea cycle is aspartate. Molecule fast, molecule linking Krebs cycle and urea cycle, then you will say fumarate. Okay. Three amino acids required for the formation of purines, aspartate, glutamine and glycine. Two amino acids required for the formation of pyrimidines, only aspartate and glutamine. Okay, glycine is not there. Aspartate, glutamine are common. So Dr. Amit is asking, creatine and creatinine, are they different? Creatinine is a breakdown product or waste product of creatine only. The creatine phosphate is used in muscles for energy. Once it is broken down by uh, creatine kinase and uh, the energy is released in muscle, after that the end product is, the waste end product to be thrown out of body is creatinine. Then amino acid which is polar, non-polar. So first you should know the controversy. Tyrosine and glycine are in controversy. Depending on different situation, sometimes they behave polar, sometimes they behave non-polar. So we cannot put them in one category. Others are polar amino acids. So polar, first is polar charged category. That they are a polar because of the charge. Basic amino acids have positive charge in which arginine is most polar having three positive charges. Lysine has two positive charges. Histidine has only one positive charge. So histidine is polar but less polar. Then acidic amino acids negatively charged, glutamate and aspartate. Then next categories amino acids are polar because of some other group, not because of the charge. Like cysteine is polar because of sulfhydryl group. OH containing are polar because of OH group. Example, serine, threonine, tyrosine. Acidic amino acids, amides, that is CONH. They are polar because of CONH uh, bond in them or group in them. Glutamine and asparagine are the examples. Then non-polar amino acids. So non-polar amino acids, aliphatic, glycine, alanine, and then branching amino acids, valine, leucine, isoleucine. MSUD is a defect in the catabolism of branching amino acids. Then aromatic, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Then proline, methionine. In methionine, sulfur is attached to two carbons. So sulfur is hidden between two carbons. So it is non-polar and because sulfur is hidden, it will not give sulfur test positive. Methionine, although it is a sulfur containing amino acid, it will not give sulfur test positive. Okay, so revise this slide so that you are very clear which is polar, non-polar and which two are in controversy. Yes, dear, uh, um, proline is considered amino acid, I-M-I-N-O. Because amino group is not free here. All of our amino acids are A-M-I-N-O because amino groups are free. But in proline, amino group not free. So it is called amino acid. So then few one-liners. Most non-polar is isoleucine. Most polar and most basic is arginine because it has three positive charges. Most acidic is glutamate. 
Beta alanine is seen in vitamin B5. Amino acid in proteins are always L alpha amino acids. They're always L alpha amino acids. L means amino group is on left. Alpha means alpha carbon has amino group. So, agar amino acid protein mein hai, to wo alpha hi hoga, L hi hoga. But if amino acid is not in the protein, like beta alanine is not in the protein, it is in the structure of the vitamin B5. So then it is not necessary to be alpha. But if it is in um, it uh, if it is in protein, then it is necessary to be alpha. So free amino acids, which are not in proteins, free amino acids can be alpha, beta, gamma, they can be D or they can be L. Okay, next. Add PI. PI is isoelectric pH. Here there is minimum solubility. Minimum solubility. So amino acid of protein is not soluble. So it will precipitate. So maximum precipitation. And at this point, minimum buffering action. <clears throat> At this point, they have minimum buffering action. Then Edman's reagent and Sanger's reagent, they are for protein sequencing. Edman is PITC, phenyl isothiocyanate. Sanger is FDNB, 1-fluoro-2,4-dinitrobenzene. But Sanger method is for DNA sequencing. Be careful, Sanger method, dideoxy, chain termination method is for DNA sequencing. So Sanger reagent is for protein sequencing, but Sanger method is for DNA sequencing. Be very careful. Then next is clean off fragment. So this hole is DNA polymerase 1 enzymes structure from N to C terminal. It has 5 to 3 exonuclease activity. <clears throat> then it has 3 to 5 exonuclease. 3 to 5 exonucleases. It's proof reading activity and then polymerase activity. Polymerase is 5 to 3 polymerase. Right? The synthesis activity. Now, if we break it here by bacteria subtilis, if we break the uh, structure of DNA polymerase, by bacteria subtilis, there is a uh, substance released subtilin. So, that will break here. That will break here. So we get a smaller fragment towards N terminal side and we get a larger fragment towards C terminal side. So larger fragment, clino fragment. So we say that clino fragment lack which activity? It lacks 5 to 3 exonuclease activity. 5 to 3 exonuclease activity is normally present for primer removal. RNA primer removal. But when we want to use this enzyme in some molecular biology techniques, then we need to remove the 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity. Otherwise, it will break down the DNA. Okay. Next is steps of karyotyping. First, we will look at the image shown here. And then we will read the steps so that it is easy for you to retain. So first we take a venous blood sample. Then we add phytohemoglobin and we culture. So we will put it, we will culture at 37 degrees Celsius for three days. Then we add colchicine. 
you know that colchicine causes metaphase arrest of the chromosome. They all lie at the equator. They all arrange themselves in line at the equator. In the hypotonic solution, then the cells are fixed on the slide, right? Then they are spreaded, cells spreaded and fixed on the slide. Then we stain with gymsa, digest with trypsin because we need to take out the protein. We just need DNS. So we stain with gymsa stain. And then we will see it in the microscope. There is metaphase spread we see in the microscope. So, first we take sample, heparinized sample we take, uh, we use heparin as anticoagulant mostly and WBCs or lymphocytes are obtained. So, we will take DNA out of these cells. Then we culture with phytohemagglutinin. Why phytohemagglutinin? Because we want maximum number of dividing cells from the culture. Then we incubate at 37 degrees Celsius. Then we add colchicine which causes M arrest or metaphase arrest. Why hypotonic solution is added? So that the cells swell up. Cells will swell in hypotonic solution and we need a better view. A larger cell will give us a better view. Then the cells are fixed onto the slide so that when we are looking in the microscope, the cells don't move. Okay, They are fixed. Then we stain the chromosome by gymsa stain and then we analyze them for large structural or numerical abnormalities. And karyotyping is best technique for aneuploidy. Best for aneuploidy, that is, aneuploidy means monosomy or trisomy. What are the limitations of kerotyping? It is time consuming. Can you see we are incubating for three days? So, it is time consuming, cumbersome procedure and it cannot detect minor changes like small mutations, minor changes cannot be detected like micro deletion or some deleted or amplification. <coughs> okay, so this was kerotyping steps. Then next is which biochemical method exploited for monoclonal antibody production by hybridoma technique? Anybody knows the answer? This was asked in AIMS. Yeah, answer is D, purine salvage pathway. So, uh, let's understand this hybridoma technique. First, we'll see the if we see the image, then we'll read the text here. So, a mouse and challenge with the proper with a particular antigen for which we need the monoclonal antibody. Now, the mouse uh, will be having antibody producing B cells in the spleen. We take the B cell from there. And we take myeloma cells because myeloma cells have a property of unlimited divisions. They will never die. So the property of unlimited divisions we need so that these cells don't die and they keep on producing the monoclonal antibody. That's why we fuse them with the myeloma cells. So B cells have the property of producing antibody. Myeloma cell has the property of unlimited division. We fuse both cells. And this is a hybrid cell known as hybridoma. But we have many unfused cells here. So we want to select the fused cells. For the selection of the positive cells, we want only those cells which are fused. We do not want uh, the unfused myeloma cells. We do not want the unfused B cells. So there's a special medium which is used here. That is HAT medium, H-A-T HAT. In HAT medium, this A stands for aminoterin. And this is... Uh, the uh, drug which inhibits DHFR, that is dihydrofolate reductase. So folate, active form of folate will not be found. So because of this, purine de novo pathway cannot occur. Purines cannot be formed from the de novo pathway. 
and also one pyrimidine thymine formation require uh, this uh, folate. So that will also not occur. So thymine we will be getting from the medium because this deoxythymidine is available in heart medium. What is heart medium? H is hypoxanthine, A is aminoterine and T is thymidine. To be more precise, it is actually deoxythymidine. Then hypoxanthine is, uh, then, so now we need purines. Purines are not coming from the de novo pathway. So purines have to come from salvage pathway. And salvage pathway can occur in B cells. B cells have the property that salvage pathway can occur in B cells. So if a cell is, uh, if B cell is fused with myeloma cell, then it has the property of making purines by salvage pathway. And it has a property of unlimited number of division also. So only the fused cell will be living. But now independent unfused B cells will die because they have limited number of divisions. And the unfused myeloma cells will die because they cannot have uh, this um, salvage pathway. So deficiency of purines, these cells will die. So salvage pathway occur only in B cells, unfused malignant neoplastic cells die as a result of HGPRT gene of salvage pathway, right? <clears throat> then tell me uh, the diagnosis just from looking at the picture. What is the syndrome? Patient biting himself. Self mutilation, biting nails, lips, so much so that it is bleeding always from these sites. And after a few years, the parts are mutilated. So, this is Lish Nyhan syndrome. Enzyme is HGPRT. Patients have self mutilation and hyperuricemia. Self mutilation is because of excess. PRPP. Excess PRPP is neurotoxic. Okay, next is tell me in which genetic material number of adenine will not be equal to thymine. Normally, we have Chargaff rule. And Chagriff rule is for double-stranded DNA, which says that A equal to C, C A equal to T, and C equal to G. A, T, C, G, C, yeah. Yes, answer is C. Very good. Because E. coli is, my, uh, is prokaryotic circular double-stranded DNA. Mitochondria DNA is like prokaryotes. This is also circular double-stranded. Herpes virus also has double-stranded DNA, but HIV is single-stranded RNA. So in single-stranded RNA, charge of rule will not be applied. Yes, dear, PRPP is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. So we can take a five minutes break and then we will be continuing.
Okay, let's continue. So next is comparison between Tata Box and Shine Delgado sequence. Why the comparison? Because they both are at minus 10 position with a lot of differences. Tata Box is present on DNA. Shine Delgado is present on mRNA. Because Tata Box is on DNA, so it helps in initiation of transcription. The template for transcription is DNA. On DNA, transcription occurs, right? Then, Scheindelgerno is helping in initiation of translation because translation occurs on mRNA. Then, Tata box is present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, it is called Pribno box, P for prokaryotes, P for Pribno. In eukaryotes, it is called Hognes box. And Tata box, as the name says, T A T A, it is rich in T and A. Shindel Garno is only present in prokaryotes, not in eukaryotes. It is rich in purines A and G. Purines A and G. Then lac operon and tryptophan operon. So lac operon is a system, catabolic system, for the breakdown of lactose, which is mostly not required. So this system is switched off normally for the breakdown of lactose because normally glucose is present in the environment. So both these operons are in prokaryotes. Lacoperon and tryptophan both uh, exist in prokaryotes. So, lacoprone, lactosoprone is for the catabolic system for the breakdown of lactose. So, normally it is switched off. Because lactose is not required for energy, glucose is available for energy. But it can be induced if lactose is present in the environment. So, lactose is the inducer and it can be induced. Lacoprone is inducible. There are three structural genes, Z, Y and A. The repressive protein is always active because it is repressed. No? This operon is repressed. So, repressive protein is always active. So, it is switched on when glucose is increased. Sorry, when glucose is decreased or glucose is not there, decreased or absent. Cyclic AMP is increased and lactose is present. Let me tell you a general formula that glucose and cyclic AMP are always inversely related. Glucose and cyclic MP. Then tryptophan operon is an anabolic system to make tryptophan, to synthesize tryptophan. In humans, our cells cannot make tryptophan. It is essential amino acid to be taken in diet. But in prokaryotes, tryptophan can be formed by tryptophan operon, which is usually on, but it, it will be inactive when high tryptophan is present. So, product inhibition will occur. So, here we have five structural genes, A, B, C, D, E. <clears throat> here, repressive protein is inactive. Cyclic AMP is not necessary. So, tryptophan operon is repressible. And which is the repressor? Tryptophan is the repressor. Lactose operon, it is inducible. Lactose is the inducer. <clears throat> codons you should learn at least these codons that triple a triple u codes for which so here the mnemonic is all or you write all okay so triple a for lysine triple a for lysine triple u for phenylalanine phenylalanine involved in phenylketonuria so you can write like this phenylketonuria u u u triple u for phenylalanine then proline the mnemonic is prolic so triple c for prolic proline then g for glycine triple g for glycine and a u a for isoleucine okay so you can revise it five six times and you can learn this so just cram the codons for these amino acids. Then 
mostly students get confused between post translational and post transcriptional modifications so on mrna post transcriptional modifications occur post transcription modifications is usually of rna and post translational modification is usually of proteins so first post transcriptional modification occur then post translational modifications occur can you give me an example of post transcriptional modification <coughs> five dash tab one mrna three dash poly eighteen Splicing that is removal of introns. Splicing is done by SNRNA, small nuclear RNAs. Then there is alternate splicing. Then there is RNA editing. All these are post transcriptional modifications. Alternate splicing and RNA editing are exceptions to one gene, one protein theory. Exceptions to one gene, one protein theory okay then we have post translational modifications which happen for protein like glycosylation <coughs> which is most common ptm here <clears throat> then phosphorylation methylation ubiquitylation hydroxylation biotin attachment to carboxylases vitamin k dependent carboxylation of glutamate cleaving of a protein proteolysis n acetylation acylation Adenylation, disulfide bond formation, all these are <clears throat> post translational modifications. So you should differentiate between them, don't get confused. Next is blotting. Blotting also called hybridizations. So southern blotting for detecting DNA, it is also called DNA DNA hybridization. Northern blotting for RNA, it is called DNA-RNA hybridization because the probe, you have to check the probe also. Probe for northern blotting is DNA. Then western, the western blotting detects protein or the antigen and the probe is antibody. Whenever antigen-antibody reaction occurs, we use the word immuno. So, it is blotting, so it is called immunoblot, right? <clears throat> Southwestern will detect south and west is for DNA and protein. Southwestern will detect protein DNA interactions. There is a technique chip that also detect protein DNA interactions. That is chromatin immunoprecipitation. It also detects protein DNA interactions. Chromatin immunoprecipitation. <clears throat> so, southwestern blotting. And chip chromatin immunoprecipitation detect protein DNA interactions. There is one more technique. Now I've written chip, but in small. So chip also called microarray. It can detect multiple mutations. It can detect multiple gene expression analysis. Global gene expression, it can detect SNPs, 
single nucleotide polymorphism but it cannot detect aneuploidy best technique for aneuploidy is karyotyping what is fish <clears throat> Fluorescent in situ hybridization. It can detect aneuploidy. Minor changes like micro deletions and amplifications. Fish can detect aneuploidy also. Minor changes like micro deletions. Amplifications and it is very important, it tells gene location on chromosome. It will tell gene location on chromosome, which is fluorescent in situ hybridization. <laughs> okay, let's revise these two these, these two slides. Southwestern blotting and chip chromatin immunoprecipitation detect protein DNA interactions. But CHIP, when written in small, then it is microarray. It can detect multiple mutations or it can compare the two genomes. So, something comparative, something multiple, and global gene expression, single nucleotide polymorphism, so many things can be done from microarray, right? It's a very good technique of molecular biology, but it cannot detect aneuploidy. Best technique for aneuploidy is karyotyping. Fish fluorescent in situ hybridization can detect aneuploidy also, and it can detect minor changes, micro deletions, amplifications also, and it can detect gene location on the chromosome. <clears throat> Then steps of PCR. First is denaturation at high temperature. The two DNA strands are separated around 90 degrees Celsius, then around 50 degrees Celsius annealing or the primer is added. Then extension or polymerization third step where it occurs around 70 degree. So 90, then 50, then again higher 70. Let's quickly read the uses of PCR for detection of uh, viral infectious agents, uh, uh, polymorphisms, genetic diagnosis, forensics, archaeology. Detect it can detect by detect RNA by reverse transcriptase PCR for organ transplants in chromatin immunoprecipitation assays in DNA profiling, fingerprinting, forensics, paternity. PCR has a rule, right? Just read all these ones. Then the methods of gene. There is four methods of gene or DNA sequencing. One is Sanger's or chain termination method. I told you Sanger method, the ideoxy chain termination for DNA sequencing. Then Maxim Gilbert, which cut double-stranded DNA at specific positions and then do the sequencing. Then pyro, pyro refers to the light. So pyro sequencing is a method of synthesis, synthesis by uh, sequencing by synthesis. So, addition of each deoxynucleotide is compared by release of flashlight. Then in next generation sequencing, NGS, next generation sequencing, it is for large scale massive production and in NGS, any of the method can be utilized. It's just that when it is large scale, it is easy and cheap, it can be automated. Then NGS is uh, the terminology which is given. This Sanger method and reagent I already told you earlier. 
then gene transfer methods <clears throat> transformation the mnemonic is transformers or robots so it is a transfer of dna from uh, environment naked, naked dna from environment or from dead bacteria goes to living bacteria then transfection is like infection it's like deliberately injecting injection of dna into the eukaryotic cell then transduction all here you relate duck and virus so when duck transduction is there then it is the transfer of dna through the virus bacteriophage then conjugation c for conjugation c for cell to cell contact so by the formation of a pili in the donor bacteria dna can go to the recipient bacteria then lipofection when liposome is used so i'll revise once transformation or transformers because only robots can extract uh, the dna from the environment then transfection it's like injection deliberately into eukaryotic cell then transduction uh, duck and the bacteriophage virus conjugation cell to cell contact pili formation lipofection by liposome <clears throat> then crispr cas9 system very important as it was recently used for covid diagnosis also so you can see the caesar cutting the dna here so this is a system which can make double strand break in the dna and it's very its discovery was very revolutionary in the molecular biology field because uh, earlier methods of dna uh, cutting dna double strand were cumbersome costly but this method is very easy like, just like a caesar we can cut dna so here the caesar is the cas9 enzyme and let's say the crispr what is the crispr crispr is a particular sequence it's a palindromic sequence so let's say this is the sequence so the enzyme cas9 or the caesar can recognize this sequence and can cut so it causes double strand break crispr full form you should know clustered regularly interspersed short palindromic repeats it's a palindromic sequence cas9 is the endonuclease enzyme crispr associated endonuclease and naturally this crispr is an immune system in bacteria against bacteriophages so this immune system or this immune system has the memory that it can be transmitted to next generation and so many generations of bacteria will be protected from the virus <clears throat> right so crispr cas9 system this much if you know about crispr cas9 it will be good it's a natural immune system of bacteria against bacteriophages. Memory is retained in the DNA and it is transmitted to next generation. The next, tell me the answer to this question. So UAA replaced by UAG. UAA is a stop codon. UAG is also a stop codon. So protein is not changed, na? <clears throat> stop codon replaced by stop codon. Protein not changed. It is silent mutation. So when amino acid is not changed, amino acid or protein is unchanged, then it is silent silent mutation when amino acid is changed by another amino acid then it is miss sense mutation but if there is a stop codon if it's a stop codon then it is non sense mutation <clears throat> okay <clears throat> then few one liners we always read in 5 to 3 dash direction and synthesis of DNA that is replication, repair, transcription that is synthesis of RNA. They all occur in 5 to 3 dash direction. 
but proofreading of DNA and RNA editing occur in three to five dash direction. Then centromeres are made up of satellite DNA repeats. Even telomeres are made up of repeats. Repetitive sequence TTA, GGG repeated n number of times at the telomere. <coughs> Then banding technique for dicentric chromosome, just a PYQ. Uh, it is C banding, just cram with this. Tata box rich in A and T, Scheindel Gernu rich in A and G. Telomere rich in T and G. Rifampicin drug inhibits prokaryotic RNA polymerase and transcription. Amanitafiloids, mushroom death cap, alpha melatonin inhibits eukaryotic. RNA, polymerase, and transcription. Uh, so one student is asking, ma'am, will these lectures be beneficial for NEAT PG also? Yes. More or less information is same. They're asking, the earlier we were saying that FMG students should read less and the paper is easy, but now you know it's not the case as per the last exam you saw. So uh, yes, uh, content is more or less same. It will help in any exam. Then uh, substrates of gluconeogenesis are frequently asked. So can you tell me what are the substrates? Pyruvate, lactate, glycerol, propionic acid, any TCA intermediate, also remember, acetyl-CoA is not the intermediate of TCA, so it is not glucogenic. Acetyl-CoA is not TCA intermediate. So it is not glucogenic. Then 18 amino acids are glucogenic. Just two amino acids which are purely ketogenic, that is leucine and lysine, they are not glucogenic, they are ketogenic. So if this concept, this much concept is clear, you can solve these questions. <clears throat> How many slides left? So I am at 71 out of 112. It's so around 40, 40 slides left. <clears throat> so we'll be finished by 1 p.m. So I repeat pyruvate, lactate, glycerol, propionic acid. If you note, all these are three carbon molecules, pyruvate, lactate. Mostly three carbon substances are good substrates for gluconeogenesis. Because two molecules of this three carbon substance will be making six carbon glucose. And most glucogenic amino acid is alanine, that is also three carbon. Most glucogenic amino acid is alanine, that is also three carbon. So out of 20, only leucine, lysine are not glucogenic, rest 18 amino acids are glucogenic. And then any TCA intermediate. Then, these are the three irreversible enzymes of glycolysis, irreversible or regulatory enzymes of glycolysis, that is pyruvate kinase, PFK1 and hexokinase. Rate limiting enzyme is PFK1. So, these three. Because these three are irreversible, so in gluconeogenesis, these three cannot be used. So instead of that, some other are needed. In gluconeogenesis, the four special enzymes are pyruvate carboxylase. Very important point, pyruvate carboxylase is activated, activated by acetyl-CoA. Okay, pyruvate carboxylase activated by acetyl-CoA. Then PEPCK. Characteristic point, important point about PEPCK is that 
पेप्सी के इज द एंजाइम ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस विच रिक्वायर्स जीटीपी ओके पेप्सी के इज द एंजाइम ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस विच रिक्वायर्स जीटीपी देन फ्रक्टोज 16 बिस फॉस्फेटेज इन प्लेस ऑफ पीएफक1 देन ग्लूको 6 फॉस्फेटेज इन केस ऑफ इंस्टेड ऑफ एक्सोकाइनेस then etc uh, inhibitors uh, etc is a complex uh, topic uh, many students are unable to understand so there is a good news for those who are unable to etc that only whenever questions are asked on etc only this slide uh, is enough for that because questions are usually asked on inhibitors and uncouplers right so let's quickly do the inhibitors of these complexes complex 1 inhibitor rotenone phenobarbitone one written at the end of both the compounds so easy to learn they are inhibitors of complex 1 amobarbital pyrcidin a then for complex 2 malonate carboxyl fungicide and quinoyl trifluoroacetone ttfa complex 3 most of the etc complex inhibitors are used in agriculture as insecticide pesticide okay Complex three, fenformin, antimycin A, and British antilucide. Complex four, carbon monoxide, cyanide, hydrogen sulfide, sodium azide. Then uncouplers are so frequently asked: dinitrophenol and thermogenin. Thermogenin responsible for non-shivering thermogenesis. non shivering thermogenesis <clears throat> then if adp to atp conversion is inhibited by ast if conversion as then oligomycin adp to atp transfer is inhibited by then attract tyrosine so be careful what is asked dinitrophenol is not natural it is a drug which act as uncoupler dnp dinitrophenol natural uncoupler is thermogenin thyroxin right then uh, glutes glut 1 and 3 are similar doing basal glucose basic glucose transport <clears throat> glut 1 in brain placenta kidney glut 3 also in brain placenta kidney but one important point here that in rbc only glut 1 and not glut 3 then glut 2 in fed state so glut 2 present in liver pancreas intestine kidney in intestine for absorption in liver for glycogen formation in kidneys for reabsorption in pancreas for insulin secretion once once insulin is released it will activate glut 4 glut 4 present in peripheral tissues muscles and adipose tissue and it is it is doing insulin stimulated glucose uptake after meals then glut 5 f for 5 f for fructose it is for fructose transport for the absorption in small intestine because sperms require fructose so testes and then in kidneys for reabsorption right <clears throat> then uh, recently question was asked glut is present on which side of the membrane so sglt or sodium dependent sodium dependent glucose transport they are present at the apical side of the membrane present at apical side of the membrane but glutes they are present at basolateral side of the membrane basolateral also called contraluminal side of the membrane basolateral or contraluminal side then gags let's quickly revise gags hyaluronic acid i'm just highlighting the important point which you should do hyaluronic acid present in synovial fluid vitreous humor Uh, required in wound healing cell migration in morphogenesis and tumor cell migration 
then keratin sulfate is not having uronic acid and it is responsible for transparency of cornea. Then heparin anticoagulant, you all know from mast cells and liver. Then heparin sulfate has a role in cell-cell attachment. It is present on cell surfaces. It is present in basement membrane of glomerulus. And this next slide. Have a look at the slide. I'll be coming back in one minute.
So yeah, I'm back. So on this slide, all the purple tests are there. So first is Mollish test, Rothra's and Hopkin coal. They all have purple ring. So Mollish test is a general test for carbs. But one condition that number of carbons should be five or more. Not four, but it's five. Okay. Number of carbons should be five or more. Rothra's test is for ketone bodies. Hopkin coal test for tryptophan. Again, purple ring. So all three have purple ring. But Mollish is for carbs. Rothra for ketone body. Hopkin coal, coal for tryptophan. Then biuret test for tripeptides and proteins. So biuret and ninhydrin, they have purple solution. Biuret is for tripeptide and protein. They have purple solution. Ninhydrin, purple solution. It is for free alpha amino acids. So it is not for proline. I told you proline is amino acid. And uses of this ninhydrin test is paper chromatography and fingerprints. Paper chromatography and fingerprints. Then red color comes uh, in which cases it is uh, red colored uh, positive result comes in Millen's test which is for tyrosine, Pauli's test which is for tyrosine and histidine, Sakaguchi test for arginine. Arginine, which is basic amino acid. So red color for tyrosine, Millen's test, Pauli's tyrosine and histidine, and Sakaguchi test for arginine. Then Benedict's test is for reducing sugar. It is semi-quantitative because the color gives an idea of the amount of sugar present. Blue means negative green or yellow means one positive orange means two positive red means three positive so you can learn it by using vibgyor spectrum vibgyor color spectrum okay <clears throat> then non sugar substances which give Benedict's positive are, most of them are acids, uric acid, ascorbic acid, homogentesic acid, salicylic acid. So my sequence is well planned most of the times. So my sequence only help you learn a lot. So here, mostly acids first, uric acid, ascorbic acid, homogentesic acid, salicylic acid, and then others, glutathan, creatinine, cephalosporins, right? Then osazones are crystals formed from sugar. You have to learn the shape of osazone. So for glucose, fructose, mannose, the shape is broomstick, like a jhadu, broomstick or needle. For galactose, it is rhombic plate-like. For maltose, it is sunflower-like. For lactose, it is powder puff or hedgehog. Then xanthopratic test, many times when you when we work in lab, our hands turn yellow. <clears throat> that is because of xanthopratic test, which is for all aromatic amino acid. Positive for all aromatic amino acid, except, can anyone tell me? <clears throat> except, except phenyl alanine. All aromatic except phenyl alanine. Yeah, Kushi and Hina, very good. The next, uh, the blood glucose test, which is done by a glucometer or in the lab. Uh, so what is the method, biochemical method, which is employed here? It is enzymatic method, GOD, POD. The common blood glucose measuring uh, test is glucose oxidase or oxidase. Okay, that is enzymatic method. You can see the enzymes, GODPOD are enzymes involved. Then milky plasma, <clears throat> milky plasma, this creamy layer after 
centrifugating and keeping at 4 degrees Celsius overnight. Then we get milky plasma and milky plasma represents chylomicrons. So milky plasma represents chylomicrons are increased in patients' blood. <coughs> then palmer and tuberoreptal xanthoma means remnants are increased. Remnants are chylomicron remnant and VLDL remnant. So palmer and tuberoreptal xanthoma means remnants are increased. Then tendon xanthoma means cholesterol is increased. Then these days questions are asked on vacutaneous. So you need to learn these. So the first one here is red colored or plain tube, which is mainly used for biochemistry samples. There's no anticoagulant added. So that's why it is called plain tube, red colored. Then gray color for glucose estimation. Gray for glucose estimation having sodium fluoride. Also, it has potassium oxalate as anticoagulant. Sodium fluoride inhibit enzyme enolase. Then EDTA as anticoagulant, lavender color. It is the main tube which is used for pathology samples. For hemogram, ESR. Then for coagulation studies, light blue color having sodium citrate. It can also be used for glucose estimation because the sodium citrate, sodium citrate inhibits hexokinase and PFK1 of glycolysis. So gray bile has sodium fluoride which inhibit enolase. Blue has sodium citrate which inhibit hexokinase and PFK1. In fact, these days, light blue colored vacutainers are preferred over gray vacutainers for glucose estimation, for sample collection for glucose estimation. Then heparin green color for bone marrow studies, then blood culture citrate yellow or golden. Then pink for Having EDTA, it is for blood group, uh, blood grouping in blood bank test. Okay. So then they ask you order of draw also. They can ask you the order of draw. So the mnemonic I made here is Briggle Gray. So <clears throat> first is culture tube that you, that you already know, obviously. First we have to take sample for culture tube. Then the colors are Briggle Gray. So B for blue, R for red, Y for yellow or golden. Then this G represents green, heparin. Then L is lavender and then last gray, last G is gray. Okay, Briggle gray. Order of draw, Briggle gray. So, so there are two G, G's. So I, uh, the first G is green and this end I have written by gray, Briggle gray. Then PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, having two or more than two double bonds. Omega-3. Omega-3, they are cardioprotective. Okay. In omega-3, we have sarvonic acid or DHA, 22 carbon, six double bonds. You have to learn the number of carbons and number of double bonds in all of them. Then alpha-linolenic. 18 carbon, 3 double bonds. Then timnodonic, 20 carbon, 5 double bonds. Then in omega-6, linoleic, gamma, sorry, gamma linolenic, then linoleic. Most essential PUFA is linoleic. And arachidonic, which is 20 carbon, 4 double bonds, used for the senses of eicosanoids and prostaglandins, leukotrienes. Now, the precursor... The precursor fatty acid, precursor fatty acid are these. So, precursor of omega-3 category is alpha-linoleic. Means, if we get alpha-linoleic in diet, it can make the other two of this category. Similarly, in omega-6 category, the precursor of omega-6 category is linoleic. If we get linoleic, then 
it can make the other two of this category. Right? <clears throat> So omega-3 are cardioprotective and most essential is linoleic, already done. Then essential fatty acid deficiency. Patient has skin acanthosis, fatty liver, so dryness mainly, scaly dermatitis, arrhythmatous, desquamating plaques, toad-like skin, hyperkeratosis, tingling sensation, mood swings, decrease ETC efficiency, alopecia, thrombocytopenia, and intellectual disability in children. So just read this slide once. <clears throat> then reciprocal regulation of fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation. Fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation. Reciprocal regulation. Main point is that malonate or malonyl-CoA, which is three carbon compound, it inhibits CPT1 of beta oxidation. Okay. Malonyl or malonyl coe. <clears throat> On the other hand, be careful. Malate is a four carbon compound which is intermediate of TCA. So, malonate inhibits CPT1 of beta oxidation. This inhibition takes part in regulating fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation pathway. On the other hand, malate four carbon is intermediate of TCA. <coughs> then a uh, few one-liners. Can you tell me the answers? Starting point of ketone body synthesis. Starting point of ketone body synthesis is acetyl CoA. First enzyme of ketone body synthesis is thiolase. First enzyme of ketone body utilization is thiophorase. Immediate precursor of acetoacetate is HMG-CoA. Citrate activates acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which is rate-limiting enzyme of fatty acid synthesis. On the other hand, citrate inhibits PFK1 of glycolysis. Okay. Then, um, whenever we do lipoproteins topic, we do in, a, in this sequence because the sequence help us a lot. So, lipoproteins are chylomicron, chylomicron remnant, VLDL, VLDL remnant, also called IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein. Then LDL, then HDL. So density is increasing in this direction. So minimum density chylomicron, maximum density HDL. That's by the name high density lipoprotein. So density increasing in this direction. Now density is inversely proportional to size of lipoprotein. So largest size is of chylomicron. Then density inversely proportional to triglyceride content. So maximum triglyceride content also in chylomicron. <clears throat> density directly proportional to percentage of proteins. So HDL has maximum proteins. And also one more point you can note down. HDL has maximum phospholipids. It is in the form of lecithin mainly. Lecithin also in the, uh, in the lung surfactant. Lecithin is also a very important part of HDL. Then you should also know that, know that VLDL is also called pre-beta lipoprotein. IDL is called broad beta lipoprotein. LDL is called beta lipoprotein. HDL is called alpha lipoprotein or lipoprotein capital A. <clears throat> so in lipoproteins topic, I will give you four slides. This one slide, then this slide, this third table and this fourth table. All these are four tables, you can say. 
so it is very uh, easy to compact the topic into four tables and revising this table and understanding will help you solve all the questions you don't have to uh, do the you don't have to read from the book the complicated lipoproteins topic given in the book which we never understand right so this weight is very easy and very clear now in next table <clears throat> the lipoprotein again in the same sequence which i told you chylomicron then it's remnant then vldl then it's remnant then ldl and then hdl then which lipid it has and then which protein it has this we will understand here so from diet lipids they reach intestine from intestine chylomicron is formed so chylomicron the lipid which it has is exogenous triglyceride and epob48 is formed in intestine so it has epob48 then chylomicron remnant now i'll tell you a trick to write remnants add cholesterol here add epoe here writing remnants add cholesterol and add epoe here okay so it becomes tg plus cholesterol epoe 48 plus epoe then in liver vldl is formed vldl has endogenous triglyceride because epoe 100 is formed in liver so vldl has epoe 100 and the trick you know for remnant add cholesterol add epoe so IDL has TG plus cholesterol, ApoB 100 plus ApoE. Then LDL has only cholesterol. That's the important point. Otherwise, LDL and IDL proteins are same. Then HDL is independently formed in liver. HDL will do reverse cholesterol transport. The lipid it has is cholesterol ester so note here ldl has cholesterol hdl has cholesterol ester and the protein of hdl are ace mnemonic apo a c e ace okay so once you learn this table it is very easy to do this table of hyperlipoproteinemias Type 1 lipoprotein lipase defective or it's activator ApoC2 defective. So here mainly chylomicrons are increased. So it is called familial hyperchylomicronemia. Now chylomicron has triglycerides, so triglycerides are increased here. Then next is type 2A LDL receptor is defective. So LDL is not taken up. So LDL is the lipoprotein which is increased. And the lipid which is increased is cholesterol. Be careful, TG and cholesterol are lipids. Lipoproteins are chylomicron, HDL, LDL. So, because cholesterol increased, so this is familial hypercholesterolemia type 2A. Then type 2B, type 2B, both VLDL, LDL increased, so it is familial combined hyperlipoproteinemia. And both lipids are also increased. Then type 3, so if you write 3 like this, it becomes E when you look at it from left hand side. It becomes E, so type 3, ApoE defective and both the remnants are increased. Remnants are increased, Calumetron remnant and VLDL remnant. Remnants have both lipids, so again both lipids are increased. This is called broad beta disease or remnant removal disease or dis beta lipoproteinemia. You should revise this four or five times and then this will be there in your permanent memory. But the way I have arranged all these slides, I have arranged all the notes. So this way it will help you make the topic high yielding, compact and easy also. So it's not that it's compact but difficult. No, you, it's just that you have to revise it because biochemistry is a volatile subject. Then the last table for lipoproteins. Um, we have already done with images also. Tendon xanthoma means cholesterol increased. Eruptive xanthoma means triglyceride increased. Palmer and tubro eruptive xanthoma means remnants are increased. <clears throat> and then milky plasma means chylomicron increased. And if in these questions, acute pain abdomen return means 
triglycerides are increased. Okay, your remnants are increased. Next is Tangier's disease. So tangy, oranges are tangy. Here the mutation is in ABCA1. So Tangier's disease, orange, yellow, orange, enlarged tonsils is the characteristic feature and ABCA1 mutation. Okay, there is decreased HDL or decreased alpha lipoprotein in these patients. You know that HDL is called alpha lipoprotein. So let's read Tangier's disease, familial alpha lipoprotein deficiency, hypoalpha lipoproteinemia, mutation in ABCA1, which is a transmembrane protein, which helps in efflux of cholesterol and phospholipid from peripheral tissue to HDL. There is cholesterol accumulation because HDL is not formed, so cholesterol accumulation in various tissues because cholesterol is not going to back to liver. So, uh, due to cholesterol accumulation, there is enlargement of throat and tonsils, liver, spleen, lymph nodes, and also mononeuritis multiplex. Then frequently asked, rice water diarrhea, cholera, intoxication is due to which ganglioside? So this is cholera toxin which binds at GM1 ganglioside receptor. GM1 ganglioside receptor, right? Then pathways occurring in cytoplasm and mitochondria. In cytoplasm, there occurs HMP, glycogenesis. So glycogenesis, glycolysis, glycogenolysis. Then fatty acid synthesis, or cholesterol synthesis. Then in mitochondria, breakdown, breakdown happening, beta oxidation, link reaction. Then any pathway of ketone body. Then vital pathways, TCA, TC. Then there's mitochondrial DNA in mitochondria. So it's replication, transcription, translation, all occur in mitochondria, also apoptosis. Then pathways which occur in both mitochondrial cytoplasm, which are these pathways? They all start from mitochondria. Mnemonic is HUG, H-U-G, heme synthesis, urea cycle, gluconeogenesis right so next is in fasting or starvation what happens is adipose tissue adipose tissue has stored triglycerides they will be broken down by hormone sensitive lipase enzyme fatty acids will be released so during fasting or starvation, blood-free fatty acid level rises. Can I say that? Blood-free fatty acid level rises. Then fatty acid goes to liver where beta oxidation occurs. There is release of lots of acetyl CoA. The first fate of these acetyl CoA is to go into TCA so that it can give energy to liver. Second fate is ketone body synthesis so that it can go, ketone bodies are formed and they go to vital organs, heart and brain. Then gluconeogenesis, but this point is very important that acetyl CoA activates gluconeogenesis. Acetyl CoA is never glucogenic. It cannot be converted to glucose. Okay, but acetyl CoA activates the pathway of gluconeogenesis. Right, this point is very important. Next, fuel of body in various uh, for various organs in various situation, fed fasting and starvation. One point to be noted: RBC always using glucose. In fed state, all are using glucose, but heart using fatty acid. But fetal heart uses glucose and during heart failure, again fuel is glucose. During heart failure, fuel is glucose. Then fasting. All are using fatty acid. But fatty acids cannot cross blood-brain barrier. So brain is not able to use fatty acid. RBC is using glucose because no mitochondria in RBCs. 
Then coming to starvation, vital organs use ketone bodies, brain and heart, liver using amino acid. Muscles can use fatty acid also, ketone body also, amino acid also. Okay. So this table is very, very important and very easy to learn. Fed state mostly glucose, but one exception. Fasting state, mostly fatty acid, but one, but two exceptions of brain and RBC. Like that you can learn. Then which has highest glycemic index? So glycemic index is maximum for glucose and galactose. So here our answer is glucose. Dietary fiber, zero glycemic index. And low glycemic index for fructose, sucrose, starch and sugar alcohol. Glycemic index is after intake of glucose. The rise of glucose in blood, how quickly it is absorbed. So rise of glucose in blood, how quickly it occurs. So if, if it occurs quickly, the substance has high glycemic index. If it occurs slowly, there's a gradual slow release of glucose from some food product. That is good and that has low glycemic index. Low glycemic index for fructose, sucrose, starch and sugar alcohols. Then this uh, comparison of uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure of proteins. Very, very important uh, table from which a lot of questions can be solved. First point, bond. In primary, it is covalent, peptide or amide bond. In secondary, it is hydrogen bond. In tertiary, it is disulfide, hydrogen, hydrophobic and ionic. So let's take this as a mnemonic, HHI, one H for hydrogen, another H for hydrophobic, I is ionic. In quaternary, again HHI here. Okay. Functional activity, present only for tertiary and quaternary structure. Denaturation, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, all three are lost. But primary retained because of the strong covalent bond. How it can be detected? Structure can be detected. Mass spectrum for primary, it is mass spectrometry, which is the best technique, but also advanced technique. Then for secondary tertiary quaternary, detection of structure can be done by X-ray crystallography, which is best for crystallizable proteins, and an MR spectrometry, which is best for non-crystallizable proteins. So tell me the answer to this question. When the two lines intercept, they, they are meeting at x-axis, then it is non-comparative inhibition. Like that also easily you can learn. If the two lines are meeting at x-axis, it is non-comparative. If they are meeting at y-axis, it is competitive. If they are parallel, then it is uncompetitive. So if the lines meeting at y-axis, competitive. If they are meeting at x-axis, it is non-competitive. Rest you know that where is KM increased or unaffected or where is velocity reduced. That you have done so many times that you can do yourself. So in the end, just a few one-liners. So aspartate amino acid forms which of the inter TCA intermediate? All these are mostly from PYQs. So here TCA intermediate is oxaloacetate. Similarly, glutamate amino acid forms which TCA intermediate? Alpha ketoglutarate. Then highest thermic effect is for proteins, then carbs and then fats. Then diarrhea cholera toxin, I told you GM1 ganglucidose, ganglucide receptor. Then galactosemia, I told you galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase, patient has jaundice and Benedict's test will be positive because galactose is a reducing sugar. Then 5-fluorouracil causes thymine-less cell death. Here, which enzyme is inhibited? Thymidylate synthase. Then this point I told you on the contraluminal side, glutes are present. 
Absolute contraindication for breastfeeding is no infection, HIV, hepatitis B. But absolute contraindication is this galactosemia. Because it can lead to, if milk is given, mental retardation will occur. Sorbitol, cataract, I told you. In sickle cell anemia, glutamate substituted by valine at 6th position. Sunflower cataract, neurological manifestation, Wilson's disease, copper, this we did. Dicumeral warfarin, epoxide reductase inhibition. RNA editing, best example of RNA editing is that ApoB48 and ApoB100 are derived from same gene. Which gene? Same gene. Gene is ApoB100 gene. But in liver cell, it makes ApoB100 protein. In intestinal cell, it makes ApoB48 protein. So, separate proteins. So, one gene gives rise to more than one proteins. Exception to one gene, one protein theory. Right? So, we are done for today's revision class. So, ending with the motivational quote. Mostly, we medicos get guilt. This is a very common uh, negative emotion I have seen in most of us. So, there is only one way of covering up guilt that convert guilt to action. So, Whenever you diagnose that there's guilt in my mind, just convert guilt to action. Otherwise, it is it will stay there. That's the law of guilt, emotion. So, let's read this one also. Guilt can either hold you back from growing or it can show you what you need to shift in your life. So, when I say diagnose that if you have guilt in your mind, that I didn't study so much, I didn't time waste there, I didn't do it then. So, you are in past. So, Guilt is a form of energy, right? You can just, in, sh in shortcut, the formula which I have uh, taken out is just quickly when you, when you see in your mind that there's guilt, I'm having this suppressed energy, I'm not motivated enough. So you find out there's guilt in your mind from the past. So just quickly convert it to action. Just start doing something. It can be anything which you like. Start from something you like and then later you can come, back, come to studies also. But the action is very important. Coming into action is very important because guilt will just uh, let us stay in our mind only. Okay, so this is it for today. Best of luck. Lots of best wishes for your upcoming exam. It's already 9th Jan and your exam is on 20th, right? So don't waste any time. Even if you waste time, don't get this guilt come in you. So keep going. I know it is hard. It is, this This phase is very difficult phase of life. I, we all have also crossed this phase. So I know I, I can feel your pain right now, but uh, it is worth it. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care.